So although alkanes are relatively stable and unreactive species, they do undergo certain radical-induced reactions known as photohalogenation. In fact, if we take the simplest alkane, let's say methane, and we mix it with a chlorine molecule in the presence of some energy source, let's say light, we will produce the following methyl chloride. In fact, if we have ample amount of this chlorine molecule present and we give it some time, we'll eventually produce a carbon tetrachloride. So let's examine the steps of this reaction here. So the first step, known as the initiation step, we have our chlorine molecule. We're inputting energy and we're breaking this sigma bond. So these two electrons dissociate and they separate, forming the following two chain carrying radicals. Now in the second step, or the second process known as propagation, we have this molecule, the methane molecule, we have the carbon H bond breaking and one of the electrons next to the H reacting with this single electron on this chain carrying radical form and the initiation step to form the following HCl bond and we reform our chain carrying radical, our new chain carrying radical. In the second step of the propagation step, we have the chain carrying radical interact with a chlorine molecule, so the chlorine molecule dissociates, forming a chloride radical, so our new chain carrying radical, and we form our methyl chloride molecule. So this is the propagation step of this first reaction. So let's examine whether or not this reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Remember, whenever a reaction is endothermic, that means the bonds that we produce are weaker and less stable than the bonds that are being broken. So the bonds of the reactants are more stable than the bonds of the product. On the other hand, in an exothermic reaction, the opposite is true. The bonds being formed are more stable and lower in energy than the bonds being broken. So let's count up all the bonds broken and the bonds being made in the first step of the propagation process. So the bond that's being broken is the carbon H bond and that requires 105 kilocals of mole of energy. Now the bond being made is this HCl bond and that is releasing 103 kilocals per mole. So we take 105, subtract 103 and we get 2 kilocals per mole. So because this is positive, that means our first step of the propagation process is in fact endothermic. So that means the bonds being formed are less stable than the bonds being broken. Now let's look at the second step. In the second step we have a chlorine molecule, so we have this CLCL bond being broken, and we have one bond being made, the chlorine carbon bond. So we require 59 kilocals per mole of energy to break that chlorine chlorine, the chloride chloride bond, and we release 84 kilocals per mole of energy because we make this bond. So together, 59 minus 84, the amount being released, we release an overall of negative 25. Negative simply means we release. So 25 kilocals per mole. So this means that even though the first step we have an endothermic process, because this second step is so exothermic, so much more exothermic than the uh, first step, that means the overall reaction will in fact be uh, exothermic. So once again, the fact that this is endothermic means that our equilibrium will, uh, will lie towards the left, towards the reactant side. And so that means we will produce relatively little amount of this chain carrying radical. But little can go a long way. In fact, the, the small amount of this radical will react vigorously with this molecule because of the fact that this is in fact exothermic and equilibrium will lie towards the product side in the second step of the propagation step. So, 
Now, in fact, this is not the end of our reaction. Remember, we're assuming that we have ample amount of chlorine, and that means three more propagation steps can potentially take place. So let's look at our continuation step. So in the second propagation step, we have the end, the product of the first propagation step react with another chain carrying radical. So this carbon H bond breaks, we form an uh, HCl bond and we form the following chain carrying radical. This chain carrying radical then reacts with a chlorine molecule because we have ample amount of chlorine molecules. So this cl uh, chloride chloride bond dissociates, these electrons move apart. One of the electrons on this chlorine molecule, chloride molecule reacts with this electron, forming the following product of the second propagation step, reforming our radical. Now this same radical reacts with this molecule. In the third propagation step, we form this radical, chain carrying radical, and we reform our HCl molecule. In the second step of our propagation step, we have this chain carrying radical react with yet another chlorine molecule because once again we have ample amounts of that and we form uh, the following chain carrying radical and this molecule. This is chloroform. Now in the final step we have the last propagation step take place, the first step and the second step and we form our final carbon tetrachloride. So once again we have four propagation steps taking place uh, we have one initiation place, uh, a process taking place, and at the end we form our carbon tetrachloride when we have ample amounts of this chlorine molecule and we allow or give it some time. So once again, conclusion. When methane reacts with chlorine in the presence of light, a radical induced reaction takes place as we saw. When ample amount of chlorine molecule exists and we allow it some time to react, the final product will be our chloroform. Now, in order for this radical induced reaction to end, we have to have the termination step take place. Now, there are different types of termination steps that can take place. One example is the following. These two radicals, chloride radicals, can react exothermically, releasing energy, forming this bond, ending our process.